we were made the middle nation. The nation that finds the balance between two sides. The, the side of action and the, the side of knowledge and the side of action. We're right down the middle. That's one of the many benefits of Allah calling us the middle nation. Now, why were we made the middle nation? You know, you, you would think this is a cause for celebration. We are finally made a middle nation. Yes, awesome. But Allah Azza wa Jal never gives an honor. He never gives a position except that He brings with it a lot of responsibility. So in the same ayah, it's not even the next ayah. You can't even finish this ayah without getting to the responsibility. This ayah is not just about the honor. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطَىٰ is the honor. But Allah didn't stop at the honor. He, then He piled on us the responsibility, the burden that comes with being an ummah. You can't just be an ummah and say, Alhamdulillah, we're the ummah of Muslims. Allah made us an ummah. That's not enough. That's not enough. And by the way, if that was enough, you would be just like Bani Israel, who said we're the chosen people. That's enough for us. We don't need to take any responsibility because we already got the boarding pass to Jannah, we're set. You know, that's not the case with us. What did Allah say? I've made you a middle nation so you can be witnesses against all people. You and I are, have been made a member of this ummah and our fundamental task as an ummah is that we become witnesses against humanity. You know what that means? That we carry Islam when we open our mouth and we carry Islam with our character, the way we do business with people, the kinds of neighbors we are, the way we cross the street, the way we talk back, the way we deal with ignorance. We are constantly witnesses against humanity that this is what a Muslim is. Your co-workers are going to the party, they're going to the bar, they're going to have a beer, and you're going to say no. And you're going to advise them against it too. This is not good. I know you're not Muslim, but it's still not good for you. I mean, I, Allah gave us the honor to be at the service of humanity. We don't just look out for the good of the ummah, we even look out for the good of humanity. That's what we're supposed to be. You are witnesses against people of what this truth is. But if you and I, if our Islam, if our dedication to Allah does not go beyond the four walls of this masjid, if we are a different person outside, and we're a different person in here, and you wouldn't recognize that person outside, you wouldn't know, is that the same guy I saw at the masjid? Really? He's Muslim? Oh my God! <laughs> Subhanallah! <laughs> you know? Then that's a, this is a serious problem. Then we, and by the way, what shahada ala nas, this concept that is so heavy in our deen, you know what that means? On judgment day, people that were around us, that had the opportunity to interact with us, that saw us, that were with us, our coworkers, our friends, our neighbors, even our non-Muslim family, all of them will testify on Judgment Day that this Muslim that was my friend, my co-worker, my neighbor, I never saw a glimpse of Islam in him. He never brought it up. It's not my fault. They will have a case against us. Even though they have their own responsibility, we are supposed to be witnesses against them, because if we're not witnesses against them, they will be witnesses against us. It's, it's either one or the other. We're going to court either way. Judgment day, we're going to court either way. But it's, you, we have to decide what, which side we're going to stand on. And if this isn't bad enough, Allah Azza wa adds another responsibility. Sallallahu alayhi wa the messenger is mentioned. He says, وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ shahida." And the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa will be a witness against you. The messenger will be a witness against you. The ayah is not done. The ayah is still not done. But I want to focus on this part of the ayah. It's a very heavy part of the ayah. Similar ayat have occurred in other places in the Quran. One of the poets of the Prophet ﷺ among his companions was Hassan ibn Thabit. Beautiful voice. He used to have Hassan ibn Thabit recite poetry to fire the troops up when they would go on military expeditions. He loved his voice so much he calls him one time and he says, Hassan, recite Quran to me. And Hassan is shocked. Messenger of Allah, you want me to recite Quran to you? It was revealed to you. And he says, but I love to listen. And so he starts reciting Quran. He starts reciting Surah An-Nisa, the fourth surah. And he's reciting, and the messenger is enjoying the recitation, and he gets to an ayah. وَكَيْفَ إِذَا جِئْنَا مِن كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ بِشَهِيدٍ وَجِئْنَا بِكَ عَلَى هَؤُلَاءِ شَهِيدًا How will it be when we bring a witness against every nation? 
and we will bring you, meaning Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we will bring you as a witness against these, meaning the Muslims. We will bring you as a witness against these. The Messenger alayhi salatu wa salam, Hassan looks up, he looks at the Messenger's face, it is drenched in tears, and he's saying, Hasbuk, Hasbuk, stop, I can't take anymore. He asked him to stop reciting Quran at that point. Why? Because of the weight of what it means that the Messenger will be a witness against us. Well, no, you know what that means? That means the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, before he left this world, before his worldly life, that component of his life came to an end, he took a witness from all of us. Did I deliver the message? Did I do my job? And we all testified as an ummah. Yes, adayta lamana. When asahta al ummah, you gave, you, you, you gave the trust. You passed it on. The trust that was given to you, you passed it on. Now, فَلْيُبَلِّدْ الشَّاهِدَ الْغَائِبِ Then he says, then the one who is here, better deliver it to the one who isn't here. You better be witnesses to humanity. And if we don't do this job, guess who's going to be complaining about us on Judgment Day? The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These people, I left them a job. I gave, they took witness that they will do this job. And they knew this book and they didn't carry it. It didn't re reflect in their personality. It, the, the, the mouth opened but it never had the word of Allah on it. It didn't have that on it. You know, one of the scariest places in the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jalla talks about His Messenger. And He says, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبْ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورَ The Messenger will say on that day, Oh my Master, this nation of mine abandoned the Quran. Now I want you to appreciate the weight of these words. And now look what Allah says. He says, قَدْ نَرَى تَقَلُّبَ وَجْهِكَ فِي السَّمَاءِ فَلَا نُوَلِّيَنَّكَ قِبْلَةً تَرْضَاهَا Allah says to His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He says, we saw your face turn to the sky The Messenger is in Medina He's still praying towards Aqsa His back is towards Mecca And he misses the house that his father built he, It hurts him that he has to turn his back to the house built by Ibrahim Alaihissalam. It hurts his feelings But he doesn't complain to Allah You know what he does? He looks at the sky That's all he does He just looks at the sky And Allah reveals the ayah We saw your face turning to the sky Notice you know loved ones among each other when you go home? If somebody really loves you, your mother really loves you, your wife really loves you sometimes. But you know, <laughs> if, if there's a different, if there's an expression on your face, if there's an expression on your face, that's a little bit different. Your mother will say, something's wrong. What's going on? I say, oh, nothing, ma, nothing, nothing. No, no, I know you. I know that face. I see it in your eyes. And you say, I'm looking at the mirror. I see my eyes. I don't see anything. What do you see? <laughs> But that's the nature of someone who truly loves. The Messenger didn't complain. The Messenger didn't make dua. All he did was look at the sky. And the ayah is revealed of the Quran. We saw your face turning to the sky. Then for sure, we swear by it. There is no doubt whatsoever that we are turning your face. We are turning you in a direction. Tardaha. That pleases you. Allah is telling His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that this Qibla has changed so he could be happy. That's how much he loves his Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And imagine that Messenger who didn't even have to ask. Compare this to Musa Alaihi Salam. Read Surah Taha. Read Surah Al-Shu'ara. Read them. See how much Allah, Musa Alaihi Salam asks Allah. Oh Allah, they've got a crime against me. They're going to go kill me. Give me Harun. My tongue won't move. He's got a list of complaints, he's got, a, he's got a few problems before he goes back to Egypt. And Allah takes all of those complaints and addresses them. But with his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's something different. He didn't even have to open his mouth. He just looked up. And billions of people will pray in a different direction. So this man, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, will be pleased. That's the relationship Allah has with his messenger. And if that messenger complains against you and me, what, what lawyer are you and I going to get? What case are we going to have? We have no case left. We have no case left. 